Ocala's information station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Six minutes after 9 o'clock, Dr. Michael Lang is just getting into the studio. Perfect timing here, and he's here to answer your questions about your eyes, your health. And Robin tells me he's writing a book about dieting, so I'm looking forward to hearing all of the above. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Larry. Great to be here. How you doing? Good. I ran down those steps again. <laughs> <laughs> he sure did. Uh, my goodness. Uh, you know, we were talking this morning about how uh, every time you have an opinion from a doctor, it seems to be more confusing and more confusing. And that's why I kind of like listening to you, because I know that you developed your own. Right. Other right. people are usually talking about somebody else's vitamins, and I don't know. Just well, you know, you got a point there. Um, you know, I'm into the science. I want to be able to back anything that we do, all right? If I develop an omega-3 product, if I develop, you know, an astaxanthin product, then I want to be able to have clinical studies that actually back what we do. And, you know, that's what a lot of these things are here in my hands. Uh, here's an example. This is a little synopsis right now, you might be able to see on the video, of our omega-3 versus all the other omega-3s that we tested. So I like to be able to back everything that we do. And this is an evolving process. I mean, four to five vitamins you know, started eight years ago, our concept. And we've changed the formulations eight times in the last six years. We're getting ready to tweak the formulation again based on ongoing research that's internationally uh, out there, national research and research that we do in-house. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm a, a board certified uh, um, nutritional specialist and also <laughs> uh, go to all the nutritional meetings, the nutritional conferences through the American College of Nutrition and many other ones because it's a learning process. I don't know everything. And once you find a doctor or, or somebody that says they know everything, you got to run the other way as fast it's as you can. A, it, you know, life is obvious, a learning yeah, process. Yeah, yeah. And so we try to bring all that into the four to five items, but also in our care of our patients at, at all the Lang Eye Care locations. All of our doctors try to do that. And so we're constantly involved in not only research, but continuing education as well. Uh, so in the state of Florida, you have to have, I think it's 30, 30 hours every two years most of our doctors get probably 60 hours every year, so we go above and beyond when it comes to the continuing education. But a couple of topics we're going to talk about today, I'll just kind of tickle the public a little bit. You know, I've been working on sort of a diet that I've been working with on myself and a lot of patients, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, kind of a true anti-aging diet. But, you know, I wanted to kick the program off uh, talking a little bit more about something that everybody can take home from this show, how do you stay healthier? What are a couple of simple things you can do from a supplement standpoint or from a dietary change that keeps your eyes healthier and your entire body healthier? Or even better yet, if you could take one or two little pills that may, in, in some studies now, may, not definitively, but may decrease the risk of you dropping dead from a fatal heart attack by as much as 90%, Wow, that's pretty powerful. Yeah. Where there are definitely some new studies on omega-3, all right, and the right dosages. If you get your omega index, this is a ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 in your blood, all right? Remember, the typical American has a pro-inflammatory diet. That's why we're all unhealthy. We're all overweight. We have inflammation in our body. C-reactive protein is elevated. Sed rate, tumor necrosis factor, arachidonic acid is running rampant. So it's a pro-inflammatory diet from omega-6. So if we adjust our diets, certainly inflammation is going to go down. But a lot of people aren't going to do that. A lot of people are going to still go eat at the fast food restaurants, breakfast, lunch, and supper, and eat all the garbage. But you can add a good omega-3 fish oil. And we've talked about this for years now. And, you know, I got kind of tired of recommending omega-3s that weren't doing a lot. And omega-3s that were causing people to have that burp back and gastric distress. Mm -hmm. And that's all related after some, a lot of studies that we have done in-house and a lot of other studies. We have finally determined that those mole molecular structure of that fish oil is called the ethyl ester molecule. So ethyl ester, they actually use ethanol in the distillation and concentration process, which is fine. If you go back to your organic chemistry days, you know, that's how you do it. We even do that with our omega-3 fish oil. But what happens is most omega-3 fish oil companies, the ones you buy over the counter and even prescription fish oil, they actually leave the ethanol in their product, okay? And we go through a phase called transesterification where we actually remove the ethanol and then replace the backbone with a triglyceride backbone the way fish naturally have it in the sea. And why do we do that? For a few reasons. Number one, makes the mole molecule much more stable. Most fish oils that you buy 
kind of like flaxseed oil, are rancid. They become rancid very quickly. That's why when you burp up that nasty fish taste, it's rancid. Yeah. But the ethanol, it actually dissolves in the stomach through the, the gel cap, and it causes a little gastric irritation. That's why a lot of people burp back. But it also causes it not to absorb well. The ethyl ester molecule, not only unstable, it doesn't absorb well. Um, so the triglyceride form is the way fish naturally have it in the sea. Um, it's, much more, it's much easier for the body to actually absorb this into the bloodstream and start getting the health benefits. So when you're looking for fish oil, make sure it says triglyceride form or TG form. If it doesn't say it, it's ethyl ester, basically. Then what happens is most of those omega-3s do not have a therapeutic level. So you'd literally have to take 10, 15, or 20 of these omega-3s to get a benefit. Get your omega index over 8%. So that's what we've done with Fortify. We developed a product where I used an EPA of close to 900 and a D DHA of close to 602 pills. And we've done omega index blood testing on our patients now. And if you're under 260 pounds, 100% of the patients went over 9%. Remember, over 8% correlates with the possibility of being very heart healthy and decreasing the chance of that fatal heart attack. So that's how we developed the Fortify Super Omega. We tested it up against about 60 different omega-3 fish oils, and we didn't find any of them at two-per-day dosing, two-per-day dosing that went over 9.1% where our Fortify Super Omega did. Oh, now, wow. is there one out there now? Maybe there is. Uh, but the gist of this story is you want to get a triglyceride form omega-3. You want to get it as an EPA close to, that's one of the essential fatty acids, close to 900 and a DHA around 600. Is more better? I don't know. Maybe not. If you're overweight, then you got to add a little bit more. But everybody in the study that was under 260 pounds, one per, two per day, uh, got the job done. But then we also made the Fortify Super Omega so it's chewable because a lot of our geriatric patients, they can't swallow it. A lot of our younger kids, they can't swallow the big gel cap. So we made it where if you don't want to swallow it, you just chew it and it has a nice lemon flavor. It actually tastes very good. So it's chewable. A lot of the vegans out there that would take fish oil but not eat a gelatin capsule due to it being from beef or, or pork, they can actually bite into it, squirts in their mouth, and then discard the capsule. So, once again, Fortify Super Omega is something that uh, I highly recommend to all of our patients at any age. You know, a mom that's pregnant, a nursing mother, even for children, you can actually poke a hole in it, put it, and squeeze into a little uh, spoon, and let your child take it as well. Oh, wow. Think about it. Most of our children today are omega-3 deficient. And most of our children are actually now vitamin D3 deficient as well because we're keeping them indoors and we're lathering right, them up right. with sunscreen right. and we're not giving them wild Alaskan salmon. Think of how many of your children you gave them wild Alaskan salmon. Yeah, <laughs> tuna so, fish maybe, but not... That's a very yeah. good food because it's got vitamin D, it's got omega-3, and it's got astaxanthin. That brings up the last piece of the puzzle. The astaxanthin that we developed called Fortify Focus has 6 milligrams of astaxanthin in it. We're finding now when you add that to the omega-3... It's kind of the double whammy. It actually helps bring down these inflammatory components in our body again. C-reactive protein comes down even more. We're starting to see arachidonic acid coming down with the addition of about 6 milligrams of astaxanthin. The combination is very effective at help helping promote skin health. I even have patients with psoriasis that is going away after about three months on the combination. And I use it for dry eyes, patients that have keratoconjunctivitis sicca, which hmm. is dry eyes. All right, we use the omega-3 and the astaxanthin. It helps eliminate the symptomology for dry eyes and also tired eyes. The astaxanthin improves the accommodative ability, the focusing ability in the eye. If you're on a computer a lot, this astaxanthin helps dramatically. Remember, people on the computer get dry eyes and they also get tired eyes. So the combination of a triglyceride form omega-3 with astaxanthin is very beneficial. Oh, wow. Also improves muscle endurance and muscle recovery, lowers cholesterol, lowers triglycerides. So once again, a combination effect that works that based on true science. That's two separate bottles. So two separate bottles. Out. Okay. Super Omega, Fortify Focus. Okay. Uh, the phone number right here, if you'd like to ask Dr. Lang a question, is 622-9622. A real quick question about cod liver oil. Remember, you used to hear about that when, uh, even before my generation, I think, is when they stopped doing this, or I guess about the same time I came around. But was that the same thing as the fish oil you're talking about now? No, you know, cod liver oil was very popular when we were kids. Um, nasty tasting. And truly, cod liver oil in the olden days did come from cod liver oil. Um, but now, 
what I hear from some of the omega-3 experts in Norway is that uh, a lot of companies are just taking a little bit of omega-3 and they're adding some vitamin D and adding some vitamin A to it and they're calling it a cod liver oil. It's truly not the cod liver oh, oil. Oh so, you know, I, I usually stay, stay away from cod liver oil because you just don't know what you're getting. Same thing, I say stay away from salmon oil. Not eat, eat wild salmon because you oftentimes don't know what you're getting. It might say wild salmon oil, but is it really wild salmon oil? It might be farm-raised salmon oil. So I stick with, you know, fish oils. Stay away from krill oil as well. And we talked about that on the last show. Um, one of the problems with cod liver oil is the vitamin A content. Vitamin A can be toxic. That's a fat-soluble form of vitamin A where the vegetable is, form is beta-carotene. And as you know from me talking on this show, I don't like beta-carotene or vitamin A. Uh, they can be both toxic very easily. So we get enough vitamin A in our diet. I don't want to get more vitamin A and cod liver oil. Too much vitamin A blocks the absorption of vitamin D3, can increase your risk of osteoporosis, osteopenia, liver problems, neurodegenerative disorders, macular degeneration, if you're pregnant, fetal defects, a whole host of other things. So if you eat the right diet, you eat the right foods, plenty of vegetables and fruits, and animal source products that are pure, you're not going to be vitamin A deficient, so you don't need to get it you know, kind of supplementally. So you're, you're putting your diet in a book? You're going to write a book about it? Well, you know, I, I've been thinking about it. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. because there's so many diets out there, you know, that people are getting on that they may lose weight, but is it really a healthy diet? It's not a true healthy lifestyle. I mean, a lot of these diets, these high protein diets, they're not getting any vitamins, all right? And then you got to put the patient on a vitamin. But who knows that the vitamin they're on is any good. Yeah. So I believe in, in developing a, a, a nutritional system uh, that's based on years of, of science that's going to slow down the aging in the body and actually slow down the rate that the telomere shrinks. That's the end cap of a chromosome. So maybe a diet that is going to be good for the eyes, the heart, the entire body, and actually slow down biological aging. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's good to know. That word lifestyle, and that sounds less scary and more opportunistic than the word diet because there are people on the other end of the spectrum that have to keep their weight up and not lose it. So you're right. going to run the whole gamut with that. Right, and, and the thing is just a diet, just a diet per se, ain't going to work. It's as simple as that. It's got to be a lifestyle modification. You're going to have to get exercise. I don't care if you're in a wheelchair. You've got to go wheel around, all right? You've got to mm -hmm. do some form of exercise to retain muscle mass, even grow muscle, to lower fat in the body, to help heart health, cardio health, improve circulation. So exercise is crucial. You've got to get sleep, all right? Sleep is a key component of it because if you're sleep deprived, your cortisol levels go up, you're stressed out, uh, inflammation goes up in the body, you die early, so you got to get sleep. You got to hydrate. You got to drink the right fluids. But people aren't drinking the right fluids. They're drinking the tap water sometimes or Gatorade. These are not the right fluids, and we can talk about why. So it's it's also a combination mentally. I mean, you got to get in the right mental mindset. You got to be happy. All right. If you're depressed, I mean, all sorts of hormones start to <clears throat> become a problem. And so it's not just the diet and the food. But certainly the food that you consume, remember, food is medicine. If you eat the right foods, you're going to be healthy. So what, what's the answer? Does depression cause the chemical imbalance, or does the chemical imbalance cause the depression? What, what wow. Is, what is the you know, I do have a degree in psychology. I shouldn't <laughs> be able to answer this. Uh, I don't know. I mean, because it, like it sounds like you were just saying that if you're depressed, it'll, it'll cause a chemical problem. Oh, right, right. But other people say the chemical problem causes the depression. Yeah, that's a good question. We need to have a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist on that's in tune with nutrition, that's in, uh, not with nutrition, but with depression, that's an expert. we got to have him on here, we can, him or, or her, yeah. and we can talk to her about it. So let's talk about a diet that I think works. And I've been using this philosophy with my patients for years, and i got some pretty healthy patients. I think I have more centurions, patients over 100 in this area, than anybody. Oh, really? Um, I like the base diet as being the paleo diet, all right? Paleo or hunter-gatherer diet. This is where you eat the foods that God put on this planet. You eat the proteins, but the proteins have to be all naturally raised, not raised with synthetic uh, pesticides and antibiotics and, and all of this stuff. So organically raised, biodynamically raised. But you can eat beef, you can eat chicken and turkey, wild Alaskan salmon. And I want to put wild Alaskan salmon in people's diet at least twice a week twice a week because of the omega-3 and because of the astaxanthin, right? Um, 
And red meat is actually pretty good. Now, some people aren't going to go to red meat just due to their religion, but red meat has, you know, a lot of the vitamin, the B, B vitamins, the iron, and things of this nature that are very, very good, uh, and a lot of other things that are good. Um, and I didn't mention, well, remember, paleo diet, you're staying away from anything that God didn't put on this planet. He didn't put a Diet Coke tree on this planet. He didn't put, uh -huh. put a bread basket on this planet. He didn't put yeah. white pasta on here. Uh -huh. So, basically, you're eating your meats, you're eating fresh food, vegetables and fruits some of them have to be cooked right. and you're eating seeds and nuts and drinking plenty of fluids but I'm modifying this a little bit so let's talk about the fluids you can drink plenty of water but the water is a big problem today you gotta drink filtered water all right don't drink out of plastic bottles because the bisphenols leach into the water especially if you're cooling them or heating them so drink out of glass bottles all right um, Saratoga Voss these are good waters that are, that have high pHs Saratoga especially remember a lot of these plastic bottled waters aren't even spring water if you have to drink water in a plastic bottle make sure it has a number one on it and never a number seven on the bottom of the uh, bottle and make sure it says spring water on it not just uh, one of these filtered waters because these filter waters are reverse osmosis. Now, reverse osmosis purifies the water, but it also makes the water very acidic. Acidity can be one of the root causes of a lot of our health issues. Oh, wow. So you'd want to drink water that has a pH above 7, preferably closer to 8. That's why I like Saratoga. And you can test your water. Simply pour it on some litmus paper. If it's bright yellow, it's acidic. If it turns it green, it's good water. So it needs to be pure, and it needs to be not acidic. So water is very important. Then you use that water to make your green tea. Green tea three times a day, because green tea slows down chromosomal aging, okay? Mm -hmm. um, in that green tea, you can actually put some Manuka honey in it, all right? Um, coconut milk. I want people to drink coconut milk frequently as well. So water, green tea, coconut milk, all right? Um, I didn't say alcohol I didn't say coffee right, right. Um, we mentioned manuka honey and I mentioned this on the show last week I think people should try to take a scoop or a spoonful of manuka honey a couple of times a day so you can mix some in your green tea you can just take it orally or you're gonna put it in your whey protein shake because in this diet you have an undenatured whey protein shake once a day and the reason for that that stimulates glutathione which is the master antioxidant in our body now, if you're lactose intolerant, you got to be careful with that, but that's why you want to go with an undenatured whey protein isolate, not a concentrate. Whey protein isolate once a day, preferably after you've been to the gym pumping iron. Take your Manuka honey in it, mix it in. That's got sugar, right? There's nothing wrong with sugar, especially after working out. So that sugar raises your glycemic index, takes that whey protein into your muscle, helps stimulate muscle growth. So... The paleo diet does not have whey mm -hmm. protein shakes, all right? So we, we're adding that. We're adding the manuka honey. We're adding omega-3 fish oil, except on the day they eat wild Alaskan salmon, don't take the omega-3 fish oil because that's very, very important. The green tea and the omega-3 both slow down chromosomal aging. That telomere that shrinks as we get older slows down that shrinkage rate. And then you've got to put plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. And the key vegetables I want in this diet is organically grown spinach, kale, Swiss chard, orange bell peppers, broccoli, goji berries, onions. Those are the key ones. Those should all be sautéed in coconut oil. If you eat raw spinach, all right, I don't want to bust everybody's bubble out there. Yeah. It's very acidic. The uh, acidity can create some problems. It also um, can actually block the absorption of calcium due to the oxalates that are in it. can increase your risk of kidney stones if you're eating it raw. Now, a little raw spinach every now and then didn't hurt anybody, and the roughage and the fiber is good for you. But you're not releasing the bioavailability of the nu nutrients, especially the lutein that's in mm -hmm. there. So if you cook it, just gently cook it, saute it, or boil it just for a, a minute then it's going to reduce the acidity, reduce the oxalate, break down the cell wall so you get the lutein and everything else that's, that's good in it. Oh, my. So no bread at all in the diet, right? No bread or pasta or anything made out of white flour? No bread, pasta, but here's one that isn't with the paleo diet, organic brown rice. All right? You can have that three times a week, organic brown rice. Got to be organic, short grain brown rice. And, you know, you could saute that brown rice and, and uh, then chop up lots of vegetables in it and coconut oil. You can even use olive oil if you don't heat it up too much. And then maybe put some organic eggs in it and chop it all up or some chicken or something like that. And that's just three times a week you're going to have the brown rice. So you, 
your basic diet is going to be a, a type of meat, vegetables, fruits, seeds, and nuts, with some of these other things that we've talked about adding. Um, also, the coconut oil. Um, one other thing that I want you to add, and you can use this as a seasoning, very good, is apple cider vinegar. We talked about this also. Apple cider vinegar is going to help you uh, with your digestion, all right? Use it as a seasoning in your foods, and maybe even take a little teaspoon of apple cider vinegar a day, especially if you're prone to having heartburn or uh, if your cholesterol is elevated. It can, some studies show, actually help lower the cholesterol. Oh, wow. But this type of diet that we're talking about doesn't have a whole lot of saturated fat, yeah, and it helps yeah. you burn uh, calories, so cholesterol should start to come down, but inflammation in the body should start to come down as well. And eggs? Did you mention eggs? Or yes, yes, you can have eggs, eggs, absolutely. Now, you don't want to overdo it. Remember, everything in moderation. You're not going to sit down and eat eight eggs at a serving. Now, should we also take the uh, Fortify Complete in addition to the Omega-3? Well, um, the Fortify the Complete, diet. yeah, the Fortify Vitamins, um, absolutely. I mean, I believe in supplementing because, let's face it, most people aren't going to do this diet. Most people aren't going to eat, and I want you to eat, be eating a minimum of 10 servings of these organically grown fruits and vegetables a day. Most people aren't going to do that, and that's where Fortify Complete, Fortify One a Day, or Fortify Macula Defense comes in because these are antioxidants that give you that antioxidant power that you may not be getting in your diet. But let's put it this way. If everybody did this diet and everybody ate 10 to 13 servings of organically grown fruits and vegetables a day, they're taking the manuka honey, they're drinking the green tea, taking the coconut oil, you know, eating the wild Alaska salmon, doing everything I just mentioned, you may not have to take any supplements except maybe just an omega-3 supplement. Uh, you may not have to take any. And then what I recommend, after you've been on the, a type of diet like this and lifestyle adjustment, you actually go to your doctor, have them run some blood tests. You know, have your blood panel before. Four or five months after, repeat all those blood tests. Also get something called a spectrocell blood test where they're going to actually look at uh, uh, cellular levels of nutrients. It's called spectrocell. Learn about it at spectrocell.com. Right, right. And in this diet or lifestyle adjustment, you got to get out in the sun. So that cardiovascular exercise, preferably between 12 and 2, that's when the best sun is available to give you the sun that you need to promote vitamin D. A little sun is not bad. Now, I didn't say go out and get sunburned. I didn't say um, don't follow your doctor's directions. If you're on a specific medication, they say don't go out in the sun, then follow those directions. Uh, but if, for most of us, we can get out in the sun, you know, a fair-complected person for 20 minutes of sun a day, a darkly-complected for 45 minutes a day, the sun is very important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm all ears because I, I keep telling, you know, I, I try, but then I get sucked into, you know, you go to the grocery store and you see healthy bread. But it sounds like even the healthy bread is off the list. Whatever, whatever might be just, healthy just bread. Stay away from bread. Greens. One of the reasons for this is, Larry, is gluten sensitivities. You know, everybody seems to be gluten intolerant these days. Celiac disease is very, very vogue right yeah. now. Now. But why do more people have <laughs> celiac disease and gluten insensitivities? I mean, 30 years ago they didn't, 20 years ago they didn't. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons for that is, is the franken wheat, all the genetically modified wheat, franken -wheat. rye, barley, Sometimes oats, you say a word, I have to think soy, <laughs> corn. I stay away from those, no. Wheat, barley, rye, corn, and soy. I stay away from those because there's so many, so many of these are genetically modified. Yeah. And genetically modified things are causing horrendous effects on our stomach and our intestines. And so, yes, I stay away from bread now. Two, uh, two questions I want to ask you. Um, one is, um, as far as the blood test that you, you mentioned a few times, can we get that at Lang Eye Care? Right. You can come to you any Lang Eye Care location, okay. and we can get that uh, spectrocell test ordered. If you come to the Lang Eye Institute in the villages and you come in fasting, we can send you upstairs to the blood lab, and you can have that spectrocell test done that day. Oh, really? Okay? Um, if not, if, you, if we can send you to a local blood lab that does spectrocell. But that's important. There's three blood tests I like, other than your typical ones your doctors run, is the spectrocell, a vitamin D3 blood test, and an omega index blood test. Those tests are very important. You need to know these numbers because if they're out of whack, you can simply adjust those by these lifestyle modifications and dietary modifications. And the other, the other question is your phone number. Where, how do we get a hold of you and get the vitamins you're talking about, the supplements? Well, the main Ocala office is right there on State Road 200. It's 237-3768. That's area code 352-237-3768. You can learn a lot more about what we, we have to offer, and it, it can link to almost all the other websites, and that's Dr. Michael Lang. 
dot com. You know, join us on Facebook now at Lang Sun and Nutrition Center. Uh, that's our nutrition center, Lang oh, Sun and okay. Nutrition Center. All right. On Facebook. All right. And and I just wanted to tell you real quickly. Last week, I just don't know what happened. The video had no sound, and it was in two pieces. But I'm looking at it right now. I see the VU meter moving, so this one looks like it took perfectly. Yeah. This and <laughs> since you have a Facebook, well, Robin will take care of all that. Make sure it's up there, and we'll put it on YouTube so you guys can use it. Because I know you do something different with that form. Fantastic. So. We did one on Macula Degeneration not too long ago, and we have had a lot of calls. A lot of people have been calling Fortify Vitamins uh, re re related yeah. to the one on Macula Degeneration. And that the, the test you did one time with the um, where showing the fish oil eating through the styrofoam cups. Yeah, that it, was a it, good those one. Those numbers are through the roof. I don't know if you've ever looked at those numbers. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a simple test. Test your omega-3. Yeah, yeah. Squeeze the oil on a styrofoam cup. If it eats a hole through that styrofoam cup, think twice about putting it in your system. All right. We need to move forward and uh, let somebody else come in here. Dr. Lang, thank you so much. Uh, we need somebody in the other room to bail out of the computer. Can, can we get them? Can you bail out of that computer in there? Yeah? All right. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, we'll get a little theme music going in here. All right. Do Dr. Lang, thank you so much. Take care. Financial Radio. One host says buy stocks, another says mutual funds, someone else says annuities are your path to financial security. So who's right? Tune in.